Okay, here we go. Good evening, everybody. Um, the Caricatonus uh, Society, you're just coming in at the moment, so I'll uh, ramble on while you all join the webinar. Lovely to be with you this evening. Uh, my colleagues, uh, Sam and Tony, are also with us. Um, they will be delighting you tonight with uh, a run round assistive technology, um, specifically focused on the condition that you obviously know well and live with on a daily basis. Uh, several people coming in, so I'll give it another minute or so. Um, thank you very much, uh, Kevin. Yeah, we're looking forward to being with you tonight and hoping the technology works for us and that everything hangs together. Um, I'll give it another couple of uh, seconds. You've got a chat box down in the bottom of the screen, Kevin found. It's uh, in the middle of the bottom of the screen called chat. That's the best way to communicate with us during the session. You can ask questions on that and I'll either type back answers or if they're bigger questions, I'll bring them into the uh, presentation at the end of one of the scenarios to talk about. So we'll try and cover inside the uh, session things that uh, come up that you want to think about. Um, always a chance at the end to uh, uh, ask questions. Uh, but the Q&A is the easy way Sorry, the chat box is the easy way to do that. Um, you can find that, ask a question, uh, tag everybody, all attendees. When you do that, then everybody else can see the question. And uh, my job, uh, apart from topping and tailing the session, is to look after that chat box and see if we can keep things uh, running to some form of schedule. I think we're just about there now. It's slowing down a little bit, so uh, I think we'll get going with our session. I'm sure we'll pick up a few people along the way. Um, so I'm Glenn Tukey from Sight and Sounds Technology, and I'm very pleased to be with you tonight uh, as our Sight and Sound voice. Um, well, I've got a raised hand as well, so we'll pick up that in a second. Um, so uh, Sight and Sounds, uh, if you haven't heard of us, we've been around for 42 years now, and we're best known as the largest company in the UK for uh, blind and uh, low vision. But we also deal with literacy and a wide range of other conditions as well. But we're all about technology. We're all about auditing, assessing, making sure the technology fits the person and their need. And then we make sure that people can use it. We don't leave you high and dry. And uh, we then support it for the lifetime that someone has uh, the technology with us. So we're all about looking after people as well as providing the right solutions and we find it more of a consultative education-led approach rather than a sales-led approach. Um, tonight we're going to take you through a number of different scenarios, five I think, and we'll um, uh, discuss the technology, we're going to demonstrate some of the technology live on screen and we'll um, running around with you. As I said, the chat box is the way to get our attention best because it keeps the presentation flowing nicely. Um, and I'll keep an eye on that for you. So chat box in there, tag everybody and they'll see the questions. We'll pick them up, but uh, over to you. Sam, I think you're uh, kicking this off. And uh, right, I hope you have a good evening, everybody. Great, thank you, Glenn. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's get cracking. All right. So this is our first scenario. Marnie is, is one of five scenarios that we'll be looking at today. Um, a range of ages, backgrounds, some professional, some in education. Um, and we're going to have a look at, uh, at their circumstances, um, some of their difficulties that they encounter due to Kratoconus. And we're also going to look at five solutions, technology solutions for each scenario. Um, which we hope and we, we think would be appropriate and would, would support somebody with keratoconius. Um, so yeah, so, so that's, that's the plan. Okay, so first of all, we've got Marnie. Okay, Marnie is 45, he's a, a civil servant and he was diagnosed with keratoconus in his teenage years when he was 16. And some of, some of the difficulties that Marnie encounters uh, in the workplace, um, he has issues due to 
blurred vision. Okay, he's currently awaiting a corneal transplant, and he, he he's using both digital and hard copy resources at work, and is expected to provide printed reports and other documents. Okay, and some of Marnie's interest, he's got a passion for travel and cooking as well, and some of the solutions hopefully will tie in with that. Um, so that's a bit of background about Marnie. Now, this is a, a simulation here of, of, of somebody with blurred vision. Okay, you can quite clearly see there um, quite severe blur um, in this simulation. Um, obviously, this will vary um, for, for each individual. So this is something that Marnie would encounter in, in the workplace, for instance. Good, let's have a look at our solutions then. Okay, so first of all, we've got the Smart Vision 2 Premium Mobile phone. This is a fully functioning Android smartphone. So it's not an iPhone. It runs on an Android platform. Okay, and it's specifically designed for the visually impaired. This is made by a company called Capsis over in France. Okay, and these smartphones are specifically designed for someone with a visual impairment. Okay, it has a clear and powerful uh, voice synthesizer. So it has a built-in screen reader. So everything is read out loud for the, for the user. All of your menus, settings, all your text messages, Everything is, is, is read aloud, okay? You can also customize um, the interface um, for a low vision user, obviously, so you can magnify the text, you can change the colors, the contrasts. Um, but as I mentioned, it is a fully functioning smartphone, Android device, so it doesn't, just because it was designed for the visually impaired, it doesn't, it doesn't lock any features, for instance. So you can access the Google Play Store, you can download any apps that you need. And Tony will actually give us a brief demonstration of the phone in just a second. So I won't go into too much more detail. Second solution we've got is some computer software, ZoomText. This is a piece of magnification software okay, for Windows. Okay, And Tony will also be talking us through um, ZoomText in more detail in just a second as well. Um, but as you can see there, um, this is a yeah uh, uh, an integrated piece of magnification software that does have a um, some speech involved, and Tony will go into that as well. Good. Third solution. Now, this is, um, we believe, is very important for anybody that's using computer software that they've, you know, um, not, not come into contact with before. Remote training sessions. Um, obviously, at the moment, due to the current restrictions, our, all of our training is delivered remotely. Okay. However, we do deliver face-to-face -face training as well, as soon as restrictions allow, um, in the workplace, at home, at school wherever it might be. So this is a, another alternative solution for Marnie uh, is, is remote training. Fourth solution, we've got the Sunu band. This is a mobility smart band. Okay, so you can see there from the from the image, hopefully, that the, the, the Sunu band looks just like a wristwatch. Okay, you strap it to your wrist and it's got a little sonar portal on the front. That sends out a sound wave which bounces off an object and it sends the sound wave back to the Sunu band and it vibrates. And depending on how near or far you are from that object, the Sunu band will vibrate more aggressively or less aggressively. And um, it can be set to indoor and outdoor mode. So depending on how populated the area is, it, you can adapt that via the settings. And it does pair to a smartphone app as well. Um, and on that app, there's lots of different features. Uh, there's a new feature they've just added called Street Pointer, uh, which is a, a, a fully functioning navigation app. Okay, so you using Sunu Band, you can plot a destination and using a series of vibrations and using your, your smartphone, you can direct yourself to the destination. Okay, so this again may be, may be useful for Marnie in a populated office space or out and about um, if his blurred vision does um, cause problems elsewhere. And then finally, we've got the Compact 10, which is a digital magnifier. Okay, it's a 10 inch portable digital magnifier but it also has a speech element as well so as well as magnifying any text any documents okay it will also allow you to scan the document and it will turn that printed text into audio okay um it's a, as it as it as i mentioned it's a tablet size so it's very very portable um and it's a very very sort of versatile little device and i've got one in front of me um, which i'll demonstrate for you as well in a few minutes. But first of all, Tony is going to talk us through Zoom Text. Thanks, Tony. My pleasure. Good evening, everybody. Okay, Zoom Text Magnifier Reader, piece of software that integrates with uh, Windows, as Sam uh, quite rightly said, um, works with all Windows applications. Uh, it, essentially, it magnifies the screen. 
But this uh, reader part of it will also uh, talk back, give you information from the screen, from the documents, from your emails, from web pages. Can you move on, Sam? Thank you. Okay, so magnification. It will go from one times to 60 times magnification. Uh, here we're showing six times, which is quite a common level, up to 20 times. Now, my view is that if it goes above 20 times magnification, you might be needing to be looking at a screen reader rather than a magnification program. Uh, anything above 20 times is very difficult to display on the screen. It'll do it, uh, but navigating around it can be quite cumbersome and uh, quite difficult. Next one, Sam. Okay, um, as well as magnification, there's a number of enhancements built in. Uh, you can change the color of the uh, text in the background, your icons, uh, to make it more restful or uh, more accessible for you. Um, we're just showing two there, one with a blue dye, which is particularly good for dyslexia, apparently, and inverted brightness, but there are a number of other schemes built in, and you can customize the colors to suit your own requirements. The way it magnifies the screen, generally it will be the full screen magnified, but there are some enhancements you can uh, bring in whereby the, the, the one shown, it's a lens, as your mouse tracks around that rectangle will follow it, and everything under that is magnified rather than the whole screen. And there, again, there are other um, ways it will present itself. Just below that word lens on that left bottom image, you'll see line, that's particularly good for, it's like a magnifying ruler, particularly good for spreadsheets, Microsoft Excel, for example. Um, and then finally, uh, well, not finally, because these are only um, a selection of uh, enhancements, there's very many more. Um, I can't, what is that? Um, mouse pointer, yeah, sorry. Bottom of my screen's been cut off, that's better. Um, you can customize the mouse pointer. Uh, there we're showing a large red mouse pointer with a big circle around it, so there's no way it can be lost. And, uh, and again, there are other schemes within it uh, to suit your own requirements. And again, you can uh, customize it color-wise uh, to suit yourself. Thanks, Sam. Okay, um, I mentioned to you, that it's uh, got a reader, so it'll read uh, various bits of information to you. Uh, you can enable or disable the speech if you want to, and you can enable and disable the magnification. There's no need to shut it down. If you've got a colleague who wants to see the screen and can't deal with that magnification level, uh, you can just disable it and then re-enable it when you're ready to go. Um, the voice, you can uh, download a number of voices. They're all naturally speaking voices and you can customize the rate at which they speak. Um, but more importantly, um, you can have the mouse pointer echo text that's underneath it. So if you hover over a piece of text, it could be the text underneath your uh, desktop icon, it will read it to you. It could be the text in a menu, a menu item, it will read that to you. So that's extremely useful. Your keyboard echo, as you're typing, there's a number of ways you can set this, but essentially as you're typing, it will echo every keystroke you make. So if you're typing H-E-L-O-O, -O, it will read that. Um, alternatively, you can just wait until it's finished the word. You hit spacebar, punctuation mark, and it'll read that word. Or if you prefer, you can have a combination of both. So it reads every letter, and then when you hit punctuation mark or spacebar, it will read the word to you. Okay, so going on from there, um, there's a feature called the App Reader which will allow you to read any document, any email, any information on a web page. Uh, so whilst you've got magnification and you can control your computer, hopefully with that magnification, if your eyes are getting tired during the day or you just want to sit back and have the machine read to you, it, it will do that. Quick shortcut brings up the app reader. Uh, as I say, it might be a Word document. It could well be your emails. It even works on web pages. So extremely useful piece of software it, um, used all over the workplace uh, for, by various people and in schools. Thanks, Sam. Great. Thanks, Tony. OK, everyone, I'm just going to give you a very quick demonstration of the Compact 10. OK, I'm just going to spotlight my video and then if I stop the screen share. There we go. Hopefully you're picking that up. OK, so this is the device. Yeah, it's a, as I mentioned, compact. Uh, it's, it's a 10 inch screen. OK, 10 inch diagonally across the screen there. Uh, it looks very similar to a tablet, uh, an iPad. 
or an Android tablet that many of us are familiar with. Okay, I'm just going to turn on the, the screen there. There we go. So I've got some uh, document underneath the Compact 10 here, which I'm able to magnify. Now, if I just tap the middle of the screen, okay, that brings up two strips, one along the bottom, one along the top with my options. Okay, so I can change the, the color contrast. Okay, I've got blue and yellow, yellow and blue, yellow and black. Okay, you can customize all of these in the settings. Okay, depending on what works for you. Okay, but obviously, most importantly, I can magnify the text. Okay, the Compact 10 is very, very powerful in terms of its magnification. Um, depending on you know how severe your keratoconus is, um, how much magnification you might need, you may not need that much at all. Um, but just having that high contrast uh, HD screen there uh, may be helpful. Okay, now obviously if your eyes do tire throughout the day, okay, and later in the afternoon, magnification is starting to um, become a little bit difficult, you can rely on the speech. Okay, so we can ask the Compact 10 to scan a document so I'm just losing focus there. Scan a document and it will read it aloud for us. Okay, and to do this, we have a, a special camera, which I can actually, I'm just going to pull out there for you. I won't be able to fit it all on the, the screen, unfortunately, because of uh, because of the size of it. But I don't know if you can see there. Okay, they've got this third camera, which actually pulls out, okay, from the, uh, from the Compact 10. Okay, and I'm just going to line up my document just going to zoom out first of all. Okay, I'm just going to line it up next to the next to the Compact 10. Okay, and then I'll just press the button in the center of the Compact 10, and then hopefully it will pick up. Should processing won't be a second. Now it's very slow at the moment. I'm just going to speed up the, the speech. Provide reading, right. writing, and literacy skills equipment and software. We have the widest range of literate literacy solutions, training and support capability to suit all ages from primary school to. Okay, so you can speed it up. You can slow it down. You can magnify the text whilst it's reading to you. I can even hold my finger on a specific word and ask it to read from there. Equipment and software. We have the widest range of literacy solutions. Training and support capability to suit all ages. Okay, so a very, very versatile little device, the Compact 10. Um, and as I said, it all folds down. Okay, and you can pop it in your bag and transport it to work, to school, wherever it might be. Okay, Tony, I'll hand over to you uh, to demonstrate the Smart Vision. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sam. Um, Smart Vision. Manny wants a uh, smartphone as do a lot of people, um, probably struggles to use the regular uh, iPhone, Android phone with uh, icons dotted all over the screen. So here's the, uh, oh, sorry about that light above, that's better. If I uh, turn the screen on, you'll notice. Battery level, 92% remaining. Do you hear that okay, Sam? Yep, getting that. Okay, Thanks. so yeah. we get um, a readback of everything that's on the screen. Now, there's a number of ways you can use this. It's got a touch screen, so I can drag my finger down Applications, double tap, and it contacts, reads out everything that's on there. Now, the way I have it set up, select, it's a double tap. Double so tap if I double tap the screen, it will open the phone. And then I've got another menu, dial, dial a number. number. Favorites, frequents, contacts, call history, double tapped voicemail. And so I go on. Um, I'll go back to the main screen we're back to the home screen so all the applications are on your home screen you can organize this uh any way you like um, and customize it if you want your main android applications you'll find them double tap phone no application applications all there so we can go down this list uh, just as we Agenda. do with the end of the list Okay, but the big thing about the um, smart vision, it's also got its keypad. A lot of people don't get on with uh, with uh, touch screens, and so we can do exactly the same Bank thing, pressing Bank this uh, navigation button to Assistant. select what we need. Agenda. Here we can go back to home the home screen. screen. Uh, so if I go back to contacts, for example, contacts. I simply press the center, this black center button, and that will open my... Uh, list of contacts uh, so I can go through those 
but also it's got a voice um, recognition feature. So I can press Contacts. the button and read in. Uh, now that calls Sue. No, I think it was a bit too late there. But um, want to call Sue Shrub or Ice, Sue Shrub. There you go. It, it's awesome. Yes. Something went wrong. Okay. Please try again. The reason that went wrong is there's no SIM card in that particular one. Um, but you can operate the phone with your voice, with the touch screen, but more importantly, for a lot of low vision users, you've got a keypad, which works just the way any other does. But the beauty of it is um, the layout. Everything is presented to you in list form. Um, I was double tapping, which is common amongst uh, other mobile phone users uh, when they're using accessibility options, but you can change that. You can run your finger down and the minute you release it, it'll open that particular application. There's all sorts of ways you can do it. You can change the magnification level. You can change the color contrast all to suit um, you as the user. So that's the uh, Smart Vision 2. Great. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Okay, we'll reshare the screen with you all. Um, sorry, apologies. Just need to, there we go. Are we picking that up? Okay, Tony and Glenn? Yep. Yep, yep. 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 So it's good good stuff. Yep. Screen off. Great. Okay, thanks, Tony. Um, good. So here are, is a quick recap of our solutions for Marnie. Okay, five of them there. Um, you know, very, very sort of uh, different solutions as well. Um, some of them, you know, obviously may not be suitable for everybody. The Sunu band, for instance, primarily used by Kane uh, users or guide dog users. However, the Sunu band, you know, may provide reassurance or just that extra sort of, um, you know, kind of safety net, if you like, uh, for a low vision user um, who maybe is uncomfortable because of their blurred vision, uh, just needs that stability in a populated area. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of things to think about there for you. But um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll push on with our next scenario which Tony is going to talk us through. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Sam. Okay, right. So um, now we're going to meet Simon. Simon's a 36-year-old who works for an insurance firm. Uh, he's a keen musician. He composes, edits, and performs music using computer software. Uh, Simon was diagnosed with keratoconus at 21. Uh, he experiences monocular double vision and ghosting, uh, and he works is job role on a variety of spreadsheets, documents, and PDFs. So let's have a look at some of the solutions uh, we've come up with for Simon. Uh, just a representation again of how Simon sees the world. Again, remember it is only a representation, so don't tell me it's not like that. It will vary, obviously. Potential solutions for Simon are Number one, Pearl Camera and Open Book Software. I said that uh, he works with um, printed uh, information, uh, which is not quite so easy for him to access as electronic, but using Pearl Camera and Open Book Software, it becomes a simple task. The Pearl Camera is a very portable fold-up uh, camera USB connection to your laptop or computer. Running the Open Book Software, he can take a snapshot. It, is a, an update of the old scanner. This will instantly take a snapshot of the text in the uh, book or the uh, document, convert it into um, printout on his screen, and then uh, read it back to him uh, in whichever way he wants it read back. He can also edit that text should he want to. Um, again, it all works on shortcuts. So. Uh, shortcut to edit the text. So if he's scanned, uh, taken an image from a, a book, he can add his own notes to it if he wants to. Uh, there is an automatic feature which will capture up to 20 pages a minute. Um, recognizing a, a, a purge page turning. So the motion detection will tell it new page. Let's scan that as well. All kept in one file on his computer that he can access at any time uh, as text on the screen. Uh, or as this audio uh, feedback. Next, we've got Flux app, which is a Windows app, which will enable, uh, well, it automatically changes your um, computer screen uh, to adapt to the time of day, perhaps, uh, with a, a warm colors at night. Um, 
and uh, brighter colours during the day. It's proven to help with uh, sleep because you get less uh, blue light from, from the uh, screen and it will adjust the glare and brightness uh, accordingly. Next one, Sam, is Natural Reader app. Now, this is a free app um, for Apple devices, iDevices, or Android phones, uh, tablets. It will convert PDFs and uh, Word documents and many other file formats into audio. So if you're downloading a, a file to your phone, uh, you can have it read back in, uh, in speech. Uh, it's 50 voices in 20 different languages, so it needn't be an English document. It could be uh, uh, from another country. Um, so, again, another extremely useful uh, for Simon, uh, where he's working with hard copy uh, rather than electronic information initially. He's a musician, we said, uh, and this is probably about the only piece of software like this. It's called Limelighter Software. It's a music reading uh, software for low vision users. It will present, now this is best used on a large tablet and I'm talking sort of 17 inch tablets, uh, Windows tablets, it is Windows based. It will present the um, music score on the screen um, with a USB or a Bluetooth uh, foot pedal. You can control the uh, music score as it pans across the screen. So you could be playing and the music will move with you. You can stop, start, you can put loops in, change the color combinations. We know that's important. But also, uh, this came up the other day. Uh, we've got a video of this anyway, but for dyslexia, it will change the colors. The notes won't be just, let's say black on a white background. They could be blue for, a, for an A. They could be green for a G. Uh, so you can adapt it to suit your own requirements. Next one, Sam, because you've got a video on that, haven't you? Claro Read Plus, um, piece of software, uh, particularly useful for when you're creating documents on your computer. Um, you can do that screen capture in OCR, just as you did with the uh, Pearl camera, but into Claro Read. Uh, it'll give you um, things like word prediction. Uh, and writing support and feedback on the document as you're creating it. So if a person is, is struggling to um, compose a document uh, with perhaps literacy uh, difficulties, dyslexia or anything like that, Clara Read is a piece of software that will certainly help. Thank you, Sam. Great. Thank you, uh, Tony. I'm, again, everyone, I'm just going to give you a very brief demonstration of the Pearl camera with open book software. Okay, so I'm just going to... Sorry, I didn't realize you were doing that. I wouldn't have gone on so no, much better. Don't, <laughs> don't worry. Okay, so let me just... Uh, sorry, Ron. Let me just stop the screen share for a second. Oh, which I have done. Yeah, great. Okay, so... Yeah, so here we go. This is the uh, the Pearl camera just here. Okay, so this is a um, sort of double solution in one. Okay, we've got the Pearl camera, the physical camera, plus the open book software, which I'm going to uh, demonstrate as well in a second. So the actual uh, camera itself, it's really straightforward. It folds up very neatly, okay? Put it in a, in a, into a little, little cloth case so you can transport it around and it's unfolded in two clicks or three really, plus the stand, okay? And then once we're unfolded, okay, we can connect this to our laptop by a USB cable, okay? And then we can pair it with the open book software. OK, which is what I'll do in just a second. But using my keyboard as well, I can control the the Pearl camera and I can control the software. For instance, if I hit where am I? Here we go. Let me just share my screen again with you all. Uh, open book. There we are. Hopefully you're all picking up open book right now. And as well as that, you've got the camera on my spotlit video as well. Um, so if I hit control and L, for instance, on the keyboard. Camera light enabled. Okay, that's now enabled the camera light. Okay, if obviously the lighting in the room isn't great, we've got a built-in light on the Pearl camera. Okay, now I've got some uh, text underneath the camera just here that I want to try and capture. Okay, and I want to transfer that digital, uh, so that, sorry, that printed text across to the open book software in digital form. Okay, so I just hit the space bar on my keyboard. Did you know we provide? Reading, writing, and literacy skills equipment. 
Hopefully you're getting the audio as well. Um, so as you can see, very, very, very fast. Okay, it's instant. Okay, now there is a few spelling mistakes in there, granted. Okay, now once I get to those spelling mistakes and I realize, oh, actually, that's that's not quite correct. Not only can I obviously have those, you know, the text spoken aloud, but I can also edit the text. Okay, so if I hit Control and E, in edit mode. I'm in edit mode now. Okay, so I can find those mistakes. Euros. Colon, Euros, O, A, E. Okay. Cap L, C, T. Comma, cap X, E. Okay, I can delete any any mistakes. I can edit. I can I can add any more uh, text that I want to. And then I can have the whole thing read aloud to me. If I hit insert and down arrow. Warranties up to five years in addition to the manufacturer's standard warranties. Okay. And on top of that. Low I've got lots size. of low vision settings here as low well. Low vision so settings, larger, larger, larger. I can increase the magnification. The white on black, green on black. Increase the color, the spotlight, the font, the word spacing, etc. Out okay. of dialogue. So it's a very, very quick and easy way of getting printed documents into digital form, and then it allows me to edit. Perfect, brilliant for students um, who may be, you know, using lots of textbooks for their schoolwork, uh, university courses, etc. Good. So that is, in a nutshell, that is um, Pearl Camera with Open Book. What I'll do now is I'll just change my camera around. There we are. And we'll reshare the presentation for you all. Okay. There we are. There we go. Great. And we've got a brief video of the Lime Lighter software as well. Um, so That's I'll... good because I've been asked a question. Would it work for choral singers? So I hope the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question. That is a good question. We'll uh, we'll let you uh, watch the video first. Discover an accessible music technology for the visually impaired, where you can read, create, practice, and perform. The Lime Lighter allows you to set your preferred zoom level, then choose from a variety of background and note color options. It also includes a wireless pedal board magnifying music tracks to your eye, so there's no need to find the next line or even turn the page. You can scan, import music XML, or directly enter scores into the Lime Editor software. You can listen through your piece at any tempo, or turn on the automatic scrolling option and play along to a metronome click. The touch features allow you to make notes in your music and navigate quickly to any measure. After the work is done, it's time to perform with confidence because you know the score. Dancing Dots, where music meets technology for the blind and low vision performers. There we go. Um, so Dancing Dots, who, who create the software. Limelighter is only one piece of software that they, um, they've they developed. There are others. So um, please do have a look at their website, Dancing Dots, um, for more information. Um, this excellent. So here's a very quick summary again of the solutions um, and I know we're, we're always pushed for time so we'll move forward um, but again lots in there uh, a real variety uh, for Jake uh, sorry for Simon uh, to have a look at Jake is our <laughs> next like scenario yeah so we'll we'll push on good okay here we are then so uh, next up, we have Jake. Okay, so a completely uh, new set of circumstances here. Uh, Jake's 14. He's a key stage three uh, secondary school student. And due to a genetic disposition, Jake began experiencing signs of Kratoconus at an early age. Jake is particularly interested in climate science, meteorology. Um, and Jake is also the editor of the school newspaper. So he's a bit of an all-rounder. Uh, Jake does struggle with myopia, nearsightedness. Um, 3D vision, his 3D vision is also affected, uh, making it difficult to see the edges of steps and stairs, for instance. So he does, he may encounter uh, sort of tripping um, or bumping into various things occasionally. Um, good. So that's that's Jake's bit of bit of background on Jake for you. And now we do have a simulation here, nearsightedness there. So obviously Jake can focus fairly clearly on his on his on his workbooks up close. Obviously, focusing across the classroom at the whiteboard, the smart board, at the teacher may be, may be an issue. Okay, good. All right, so here's our solutions then. First up, okay, so another double solution here. We've got some software and some hardware. We've got the TeamViewer software, okay, paired with a tablet. 
with an iPad or, or, or another 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 tablet. This would allow Jake. Okay, now this is a very common solution used by. Um, teachers within the classroom uh, not just to connect with with visually impaired students but other students as well um, so lots of uh, schools now are using uh, interactive smart boards okay in order to display the work for the class uh, to, to to view um, obviously somebody like Jake that's going to be difficult okay so what he can do is using team viewer he can wirelessly connect to the smart board okay using a tablet okay and then he can display anything that's on the smart board he can display on his tablet up close OK, he can then also adjust the screen angle, the colours, the contrast, the magnification settings. OK, and the teacher also has control. OK, the teacher is able to pause, for instance, or to obviously uh, disconnect, reconnect, etc. Um, so a very, very common uh, solution used in mainstream schools. Um, so but obviously this would hugely benefit somebody like Jake with a visual impairment. Um, so that is the team viewer software. Next up, we have an app, okay, another free app, and this is completely free as well. There's no in-app purchases. This is what you see is literally what you get. Um, it's brilliant, okay? It's a free app for iOS, for Apple devices and Android. I recommend downloading it immediately uh, to, 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 to experience the benefits. It's a scene description app or an object description, okay? You can scan the room. You can just scan an object. You can just, just scan your environment, your surroundings, and it will give you a detailed description of what you you have pointed your smartphone at okay it's very good it even gave me the breed of my dog okay a cocker spaniel um it's very very good okay so a very very simple and free uh, resource um for, for anybody to use in order to identify their surroundings or identify an object up close um quite quickly next up we've got the envision glasses now this is a, a going from very simple with tap tap c to very sophisticated with envision tony's going to give us a demonstration of this but these are a pair of smart glasses google powered smart glasses okay with a whole host of features and i'll let tony go into that in just a second next up okay we have a a talking calculator essentially but it has a very fancy name psi plus three thousand three thousand five hundred calculated with speech now this is a graphing calculator obviously we mentioned that jake's interests meteorology um anybody any student that is working you know with graphs charts maps um this calculator is very very sophisticated it allows you to plot all of those um, elements but with added speech, okay? Um, again, high resolution, seven inch screen uh, and a four line color display, okay? So perfect for students. Obviously, you know, quite specific if, if they were studying that field, um, but there may be other uses for, for, for various courses, okay? And then finally, we've got a transformer. Now this solution, I believe is perfect for Jake, okay? This is, um, again, another versatile solution. It's, you know, a classic CCTV magnifier so it will magnify from at distance so it'll magnify across the room but it will also magnify up close you can spin that camera head round and direct it at the table and magnify whatever is up close but you can also turn it to magnify across the room the transformer also has a wi-fi hotspot built in okay so J jake can connect to the wi-fi hotspot wirelessly and he can connect to his ipad or to his phone or to a laptop and whatever the transformer is magnifying, if he's pointing it across the room and he's magnifying the, the smart board, that will then appear on his chosen device, a tablet or a, or a laptop, whatever it might be. From there, again, you can customize all the low vision settings, as well as you can ask the transformer to scan text and read it aloud for you as well. Um, so again, a very, very versatile solution, the Transformer HD with Wi-Fi. Good. All right, I'll hand over to Tony and uh, we'll let him demo and vision for you all. Thank you, Sam. Right. Oh, you've done that. Thank you very much. Let me just get rid of this. Close that. That's better. Okay. Um, Envision glasses. Let's just show you these. The adjective better is usually defined as a superior quality. Now that quality is my Alexa. Essence. She's picked up something I've just the said. Better Alexa, is stop. Defined a... Thank you. I don't know what I said to upset her. <laughs> Envision glasses. Um, this is the uh, business side of it forms the arm of uh, this pair of spectacles. The uh, frames are titanium, they're quite flexible, so they, they, they'll fit anybody, but they are very skeleton, uh, nothing to them. Uh, 
just to support the uh, Google Glass. Now I'm going to switch from here to here. Put the mic straight on so you can hear it. Okay, can you hear that, uh, Sam? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we've got that. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's good. Right, bear with me a second then. Okay, so what do they do? Well, um, up here, there's a little uh, prism, which uh, is a, a screen that I can turn off if it, it affects me, but if I can uh, move it to uh, where I can see, it works pretty well. But that's, that's not the part of it. The point is, um, it will read to me. For example, I'll go through the various uh, features. Oh, right. oh. That's the home screen where I'll get a lot of information read to me, like um, I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. It'll tell me the date and the time and the battery condition. If I move from there, read. it says read. So I'm going to tap that. Read. Instant text. Instant text. This is one feature. Uh, if I want to read something quickly, I'll just tap it quickly. Instant text. Instant text. Right, slow down. Instant text. Instant text. Instant text. Scan text. Instant text. Instant text. Instant text. Instant text. All right. Scan text. I'll come back to that one. Uh, scan text. So I'll tap it. Scan text. Scan text. There we go. Okay. So here's a book. Just picked randomly. I will look at uh, some text on the book. Now I just hold it in front of me. I'll double. Faster frequency of beeps means that more words are detected. Okay, Double so to scan the text. let's get it to a quite a level. That's better. Double tap. Okay. Reader, an astonishing offer. The DNs will now reading a week's time voice. that text text answer, to me. So if you really want to spend a day or two door, you'd better do so quickly, for after that you may. Okay, so I paused it. I can uh, start it again by tapping. I can swipe forwards and backwards to go back up or down the page further to skim reading. Um, I can, let's, let's, let's come out of that for a second. The answer. So if you really want oh, read. Okay, read. Uh, so read. I can scan various pages and keep them all together rather than individuals and sit back and listen to that. Let's just go back into instant this read, text. instant text. Now then, 22. this is reading any text R. that comes in front of it. So if I've got this, what, can't see what it is, I'll hold Nation. it in front. And it's cooperative, paracetamol, pain reliant, tablets, instant, instant text. So that's going to read anything instantly to me, which is useful. Normally I have two packs that are identical. One tells me it's plasters, one tells me it's paracetamol. I could be out and about in the street. It's going to read, read street signs, shop fronts, uh, notice boards, and things like that. Uh, if I move forward, I come out of read. Identify. identify. This is quite useful. Double tap. Describe go and scene. describe a scene. Let's do that. A laptop on a desk. Okay, so I'm looking at my laptop on the desk. It could be anything. I just um, move around, tap it, and it will take a snapshot and describe it to me. We'll come away from that. Describe scene. Detect colors. I'm scanning through this because there is so much packed in. That's a color detector. We all know what those do. I'll come out there. Identify. Find. Find. Now, this is quite useful. I'm going to put something on my desk. And I'm going to go into find. Find object. Find an object. Backpack. No, I don't want a backpack. Bicycle. I don't know why bicycles are never. I don't. Oh, I suppose if you want to avoid obstacles. Chair, cup, bottle. Bottle. If you hear a beep, it means the object is in front of you. Oh, perhaps there's not a bottle on the table. Oh, I know why. There's so much light around here. There you go. That's just told me there's a bottle in front of me. Could be a set of keys. Could be my computer. It could be a whole range of things. And very soon you're going to be add your own uh, to this list, which is not exhaustive, but you'll be able to add your own finds to it. Let's come out of that. Find object. Find people. Find people. Um, this will tell me if there's a person in front of me. And if I've told 
uh, my Virgin glasses, who that person is, in future, it will say, looks like Sam, looks like Glenn. Uh, the only person in here at the moment is not available, so that's a bit difficult to show you, but it's brilliant. Explore. Explore. Okay, I'll double tap this and go through it briefly. TV. No, laptop. it's not. Oh, laptop. laptop. Cell phone. Laptop. So as I'm looking around the room, I should pick up a chair. Computer mouse. Uh, anyway, you get the gist of it. Here's my computer mouse. So I can explore and it will read out what's in front laptop. of me. I'm going to come out of that. Explore. Now, come out of there. TV. Laptop. Explore. Find. Call. This is a brilliant piece, okay? I'm going to call uh, an ally. Now, my ally has an app on their phone, uh, which they can download. It doesn't cost anything. I've registered uh, them as an ally. I'll go into call here, an call an ally, yes. And it's going to give me a list of all the allies Sam. I've got. That's who I'm going to call, Glenn Tookie. Connecting with Glenn Tookie. You getting it, Glenn? Yeah, I think I picked you up. Hello? Hello. Okay, so I can hear Glenn. He can hear me. He can also see what's in front of me. Yeah, I can, uh, I can see in front of you is, oh, you're looking at your computer screen. Absolutely right. Okay. I just, chairs yeah, I just get this feeling there's someone else in the room. So who's well, that? I can see your good lady wife, Sue. Hi there. Hi there, Glenn says. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Ben. No problem. Swipe down again to exit. Call ended. Call ended. Okay, so that's ended the call. Now, imagine this. I could be out and about. Um, not sure where I am. Uh, could be on a station. Where's the booking hall? Where are the gates? I can uh, tap call an ally. If it was Glenn, he'd be able to see exactly what was in front of me. Perhaps guide me to the booking hall. Um, guide me to the gates. Uh, it could just be... I brought this uh, jacket. What do you think of it, Glenn? What colour is it? And all that sort of thing. So extremely useful. And I think these Envision glasses are brilliant. Thank you, Sam. Great. Thanks, Tony. Okay. Let's reshare. Okay. You picking that up again, gents? Yes. Yep, we've got that, yep. Thank you. Good. All right. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, Envision. Brilliant uh, wearable device. Good. Now we have a very, very quick demo of Tap Tap C, which is the um, uh, scene description uh, app, free app that I told you about. Identifying objects and labels can be tricky for those that are blind or visually impaired, especially if you're out shopping. Enter the Tap Tap C app. This iOS and Android app works seamlessly with voiceover on your iPhone and talkback on Android. I'm using my iPhone for today's demo. Tap Tap C is a very basic app that uses your camera to identify objects. Once you open the app, all you need to do is take a photo of the object you're trying to identify. You can take a photo by double tapping on the screen. Tap Taps will then tell you what you've just taken a picture of. Now this process takes a few seconds, so be patient. Picture three is Bigelow Cozy Chamomile Chamomile Herbal Tea Box. This is a good tool if you're out grocery shopping and need to identify the item you're purchasing. If you didn't quite catch the name the first time, you can have it repeated to you by double tapping on the repeat button in the top left. Picture one is London Orchard Natural Pure Honey Bottle on white surface. You can also identify photos from your camera library by double tapping on library at the top in the center. This is handy if a friend has shared a photo with you, but you need more detail. Tap Tap C is totally free to download. For more app TV tips, how to's, featured apps and interviews, head to ami.ca slash shows. Identifying objects and labels okay. can be tricky. There we go. Tap Tap C, everyone. Um, good. Now, just a, another quick overview of the solutions. Uh, we don't have, uh, we're very pushed for time again, so I won't go on. Um, but yeah, lots packed in. Um, hopefully, we've got some time for questions at the end. Great. Okay, next up, Melissa. Okay, another student. Melissa's 23, okay, and she's studying graphic design and illustration at university. Melissa was diagnosed with keratoconus during secondary school. Um, some of her interests, Melissa enjoys mindful, reading mindfulness and self-help books in both printed and digital forms, but often experiences visual fatigue. 
Melissa struggles to make annotations during lectures. This is due to certain colours and contrasts causing lethargy. And Melissa uses a smartphone. Okay, and Melissa is also eligible for DSA support, which if we have time, we will go into more detail about. Good. So that's uh, that's Melissa. Okay. Great. So some solutions then. First of all, we've got the Live Live Scribe Echo Smart Pen. Okay. Now this is as the name suggests, a handheld pen, okay? It's a digital pen, however, that one, when uh, using the pen, okay, you have to use, uh, use a, a particular type of, of paper, live scribe paper, in order to make your notes, okay? And from that paper, uh, the notes can be recorded on the, on the live scribe pen, okay? And then they can be transferred to a computer, okay? So for anybody with a visual impairment, you know, that might, again struggle with fatigue throughout the day and um, they can store their notes okay they don't have to read them all through um, and then transfer them to a computer or listen to them later on okay they can just have them spoken to them in audio format okay got a built-in memory of two gig okay but obviously you can transfer your notes across to save the memory okay we've got another uh, free solution uh, for any apple users out there okay um Lots of people don't know they exist because they're nicely hidden, um, but Apple accessibility features are very, very good. Okay, so for anybody with low vision, um, there are lots of features built into Apple devices, iPhones, iPads, or a Mac um, that would allow you to, to, to use your computer in a much more accessible way. Okay, we've got voiceover, okay, mainly used for somebody that's either you know, has no vision or severely sight impaired. This is a, a built-in screen reader, essentially, but the Zoom, options, text size, and display, all customizable, okay? You can magnify your screen. You don't need any special software. It's all built in. You can ask um, Apple to read some parts of your screen for you. You can use your mouse as, a, as an echo to hover over certain things. Um, all built into Apple devices, okay? The Mercury 12, okay? This is a low vision workstation, okay? It's essentially, it's a Surf 12, it's a Mercury, it's a Microsoft, surface pro tablet and it's docked into the mercury 12 there okay which has a a camera underneath it okay so you can pop documents underneath the tablet and you can magnify them you can also magnify it distance and again similar to the transformer which we looked at before you can also scan documents have them read aloud for you you can then magnify them etc we've got a, a mini uh, short video i believe uh, to show you on this in just a second as well but that is the mercury 12 Surface Pro, okay? It's a magnifier and a, a distance magnifier with speech as well. The fourth solution, very straightforward. I've actually got a pair here with me. I occasionally wear them towards the end of the day um, if I because I sometimes get headaches from looking at my computer screens all day. Uh, blue light filtering glasses, very, very simple, okay? These were about a fiver off Amazon, okay? Um, as it says there, nearly 70% of people experience digital eye strain due to prolonged use of electronic devices. We're all guilty of it in 2021, but particularly students, okay? Constantly using computers, tablets, phones, etc. These are brilliant, uh, okay? A very inexpensive, simple solution, okay? That would help with any visual fatigue throughout the day, okay? You can, obviously, as we looked at before with F-Flux, you can put filters onto your computer screens to help with this, but old fashioned way, you can buy yourself a pair of these blue light filtering glasses and it really does help with lethargy, with headaches, with sleep as well. You will sleep a lot better using these glasses. And then finally, we've got quite a, a sophisticated solution again called the Orcam Read. This is a handheld scan and read device. Okay, you simply point it at the text, a little laser zaps the, uh, the text, okay, and scans it and it reads it aloud through the speaker built into the Orcam. I've got a video on this as well, which I'll show you um, as we move forward. And in fact, here it is. Oh no, sorry. This is a brief video about Apple accessibility features, okay, which I think is really, really uh, useful. A few tips and tricks for you. Change the way colors are displayed on your iPhone to something that's easier on the eyes. Here's how with invert colors. First, we're going to add invert colors as an accessibility shortcut so that you can easily turn this feature on whenever you need it. To do this, open Settings, tap General, 
tap Accessibility. Then scroll down and tap Accessibility Shortcut. Here, you'll see two options for reversing the colors on your display. The first is Classic Invert, which reverses your entire display. We're going to use Smart Invert, which reverses all colors on your display, except for images, media, and some app content that already uses dark colors. Now that you've added Invert Colors as an accessibility shortcut, you can turn it on or off from any screen. Just triple-click the side button on your iPhone 10 or later, or triple-click the home button on earlier models. Let's take a look at what your apps look like with Smart Invert. Swipe along the bottom edge of the screen to go to another open app. Some apps, like Calendar, show all of their colors reversed. Keep swiping to view more. In apps that are media-heavy, like Photos, you'll see that the app itself shows inverted colors, but your photos and videos stay in their true colors. That way, you can view the original versions of your photos on a background that might work better for you. And that's how to invert the colors on your iPhone. To learn more about the accessibility settings in iOS, subscribe to the Apple Support Channel, or click another video to... Okay, and we'll jump forward, because again, I know we push for time. This is the OrCam Read, everyone. This is the handheld text-to-speech device. OrCam Read was designed especially for people who have dyslexia, reading difficulties, learning disabilities, or reading fatigue. It can read any printed or digital text, wherever you are, on any surface, at just the push of a button. OrCam Read does not require any internet connection, as everything is processed within the device. So whether it's a book at home in the evening, a newspaper in the morning, documents that come across your desk at work or at school, computer or smartphone screens, or even a novel on an airplane or a train, OrCam Read can be used anywhere at any time. OrCam Read gives you full control. You can read at your own pace as it allows you to set the playback speed for slower reading or even for speed reading. Using cutting edge artificial intelligence technology, you can also choose to read from specific points on the page with two different laser capture settings. The first laser will capture the entire page, and the second laser will capture a specific paragraph. OrCam Read captures and reads the entire page with just one press of a button, using the most advanced AI and OCR technologies. You can even connect to Bluetooth or wired headphones for private listening, leaving you free to multitask. The advanced award-winning OCR technology implemented into OrCam Read originated from OrCam My i2, the world's most advanced assistive wearable device for the blind and visually impaired, which is currently being sold in more than 40 countries and 20 languages. Using this technology, OrCam Read is able to offer the best user experience possible in an assistive reading device. And that is what this technology is all about. It's about giving people the independence that they need and empowering them to do the things that they wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Okay, there we have it. Excellent. There we are. That is uh, there are all the solutions there for Melissa. Now we do have one scenario to go, Glenn. Are we okay to push forward? Yeah, I think if we can uh, move through it at a reasonable pace, then uh, yep. it's, it's a good one to show. So I, I like it. So. Great. Okay, I'll hand over to Tony, who's going to talk us through our final scenario. Thanks, Sam. Okay, so let's meet Elizabeth. Um, Elizabeth, 69-year-old, lives alone, dry eye syndrome and contact lens irritation. Now, Elizabeth regularly attends a local book club, but difficulties include locating text, particularly the beginning of words or sentences, operating a mobile phone or tablet. Uh, she's got visual halos after dark and general orientation uh, when leaving her house. So let's have a look at the uh, potential solutions for Elizabeth. Oh no, let's have a look at uh, the way Elizabeth sees the world first. Again, just a representation. So potential solutions, number one is uh, the Bose Clip Mobility Guide. Now, you, you, Sam already uh, described the Sunuban to you. This is uh, another mobility guide. Uh, which is a clip, it clips onto, uh, it could be a belt, it could be um, your jacket, it could, anything, okay? Uh, and it very similar, it uh, sends out a sonar signal, which bounces off the uh, obstruction, the object, and bounces back, and uh, gives you 
a vibration uh, depending on how near, how far it is. Um, doesn't have the sophistication of the uh, Sunu band, which has got an app attached to it, but it is a simple uh, mobility guide uh, that will help you around the place detecting obstacles. Portable video magnifiers, by far the most popular for low vision um, people. I'll go through a uh, selection in just a while. Mini vision mobile phone. Um, I'll go through that with you, yeah, because it's important. Uh, another app. Now, this is uh, Seeing AI. It's only available for iDevices. Uh, it's free. Uh, turns the visual world into an audible experience, it says there. Um, so uh, if you've got text in front of you, you, you using your iPhone camera, uh, you can take a snapshot of the text and uh, it will uh, read it back to you. Um, I, it says provide audio guidance. That's on how you um, set it up on the page, isn't it, Sam? On the text, yeah. Thought That's so. right, yeah. Yes. Te text orientation, yeah. Yeah, okay. So very useful app. Doesn't cost you anything, but it will enable you to uh, capture printed text and have an audio feedback of it. And synaptic tablet. Okay. Um, I mentioned to you the or showed you the Smart Vision 2 earlier, which has got a touchscreen and a keyboard. The Synaptic is uh, different in as much that it doesn't have a keyboard. It is purely touchscreen. But again, it lists all the items. Uh, I was giving it away, hasn't it? It presents all the items in a list format, uh, which you just scroll down your screen with your finger. Again, you can double tap or just lift your finger to open that particular application based on Android. Uh, so you've got access to uh, the Play Store and uh, all of those apps. You can change the color combinations, the magnification and everything else. So pretty useful. Works, excuse me, works also on a phone. There's a synaptic phone and a synaptic tablet. Great. Yep, that's great. Yeah, I'll hand over to you then, Tony, for the demonstration. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> right, okay, let's <laughs> yeah. just flip cameras. You're busy on this one. You're doing a great job, Tony. Keep it. Thank you, Glenn. Right, let's just bring that down because the, the uh, you see. Right, this is uh, a video magnifier. Uh, in this particular instance, it's the Ruby XLHD, which gives me a five inch screen. High color contrast on the buttons. There are little dots that you can feel. So there's some uh, tactile side to this. I'll just turn it on. And no, still haven't got the right camera angle. I'll try bringing it down. Trouble is with these because it's a screen, it's difficult to see uh, the text on the camera, but no, it's not a good idea. There we go. That's better. That's better. Okay, so you you probably saw that. I can uh, adjust the magnification levels up or down. It's continuous zoom. I can change the color contrast. That's full color. Uh, might prefer it now that it doesn't come across on the computer screen, but yellow and black, yellow and blue, um, black and white negative, black and white positive, and then back to... Uh, back to full color, excuse me. So um, extremely useful uh, for people who need magnification. Uh, unlike uh, optical magnifying glasses, this covers a whole range of uh, magnification levels. And you'll notice it's on a stand, which gives you a comfortable 45 degree reading angle. But if you're out and about in the shops, I'll fold it down, I'll turn it off, I know. Okay, there's a handle here, can you, can you see that? that comes out and now I've got a handheld magnifier that um, I can take out and about, check, it's difficult with this camera, check um, ingredients, sell by dates, product names, all sorts of things while I'm out and about. Now I said to you this is the XLHD, it comes as a bigger version, which is a seven inch. So exactly the same, it's just got a seven inch uh, screen um, there is no handle because of the size of it, but you can hold it and it will give you a certain amount of distance vision. 45 degree reading angle as well. Uh, all the controls are exactly the same as the previous one, 
But this camera is slightly different in as much as you can move it. It's a pivot cam. It will pivot around. Now, this will go 180 degrees and it will flip the image. And if I put it there, there you go. This is how I put my makeup on in the morning. OK, so you've got a magnifying mirror. It will increase decrease the magnification level. I don't want to change the colors uh, because it needs to be full color for that. So that's a seven. So you've got five at seven and it's a little baby one. It is a 4.3 inch screen on this one. Exactly the same principle behind all the others. You'll notice the same uh, keys. Uh, yeah, buttons. I just turn it off or what? And do you know what? I put new batteries in this just a moment ago. There is no reading stand. You have to look flat down on it, but that's not a problem. There is a handle that comes out, so I can use it as handheld. But more importantly, if I put that in that format and turn it on, the camera is there. So I can put my hand behind it, uh, thread a needle. Hey, look, what I would text I was showing you was time flies. And there is a guy that... Uh, ties his fishing flies using that principle uh, behind a ruby magnifier. Thank you, Sam. Oh, sorry. Great. Wait. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. And then to, to finish, <laughs> to finish, <laughs> to finish with everyone, we're just going to have a quick look at uh, Seeing AI, the, uh, the free app from Microsoft. Um, so let me just reshare my screen with you all. Great. And where are we? There we go. Okay, so this is Seeing AI. Seeing AI is a Microsoft research project for people with visual impairments. The app narrates the world around you by turning the visual world into an audible experience. Point your phone's camera, select a channel, and hear a description. The app recognizes saved friends. Jenny near top right, three feet away. Describes the people around you, including their emotions. 28-year-old female wearing glasses looking happy. It reads text out loud as it comes into view, like on an envelope. Ken Lawrence, P.O. Box. Or a room entrance. Conference 2005. Or scan and read documents like books and letters. The app will guide you and recognize the text with its formatting. Top and left edges not visible. Hold steady. Lease agreement. This agreement. Exit. When paying with cash, the app identifies currency bills. 20 US dollars. When looking for something in your pantry or at the store, use the barcode scanner with audio cues to help you find what you want. Campbell's tomato soup. When available, hear additional product details. Heat and microwave bowl on height. And even hear descriptions of images in other apps like Twitter by importing them into Seeing AI. A close up of Bill Gates. Finally, explore our experimental features. Like like scene descriptions to get a glimpse of the future. I think it's a young girl throwing a frisbee in the park. Experience the world around you with the Seeing AI app from Microsoft. Okay, there we go. Um, and then finally, a summary of Elizabeth's solutions. And that is it, everyone. Those are our five scenarios that we've looked at. Um, one thing I will say before I hand back to Glenn is obviously, um, you know, this is sort of just the tip of the iceberg in terms of assistive technology. Um, if you know that there may be, if you don't feel like any of the solutions we've we've shown you today may be suitable, um, there are many others available. Um, so we may have something else that may be um, may be able to to support you with your keratoconus. Um, but hopefully, there was something in there that was that was useful. So I'll hand back to Glenn to uh, to, to to finish off for us. Thanks, Glenn. Yeah, thanks very much, Sam, and thanks uh, very much, everybody, for being with us tonight. Um, I've been asked to remind you that you can discuss or comment on these solutions on the KC Group Forum. And um, if you just move on to the last slide there for Sam. So if you go there, you can uh, chatter amongst yourself on them. And if you move on one more, I'll just go to the sort of wrap up where you can find other resources. So. Um, we've got an app which downloads on your smartphone called WhatAT, W-H-A-T-A-T, -A -T, uh, Android and iOS. Uh, you should better find that in the stores. And that uh, highlights all the different uh, eye conditions and the technologies that uh, support them. So it's a broader view of what you've seen tonight. You can go to our website, 
sightandsound.co.uk and find lots of info, lots of products. Um, and uh, uh, you can also go to our um, YouTube channel, Sight and Sound Technologies YouTube channel, where there's a range of podcasts, videos, webinars, short five minute coffee cup videos on lots of the solutions that you've seen here tonight. So there's lots of places to go and find out more information, but we are here. Okay, you can find us at sales at sightandsound.co.uk. You can find us through the, um, uh, the guys on your group and your forum who have put this together tonight and they'll point you in our direction. I would be really pleased to, no obligation to chat to you, talk to you, show you tech and see if we can uh, help you uh, find uh, technology that gives you some form of independence. Um, and we've got our advisors like Tony and uh, Sam who will come out and find you anywhere in the UK or Ireland if you need to find us as well. So there's a range of resources you can go and get and see and look uh, and you can always ask us as well if you need some more help. What we've tried to take you through here tonight is a range of different technologies, um, free and paid for and simple and sophisticated and everything in between. And we've got lots more in our toolbox if you need to find it. So I'd just like to say thank you to Tony and Sam for doing the hard work tonight. Thank you everybody for staying on the call. Um, and we'll always come back. And when we can come back face to face, we'll bring the kit and you can play with it as well. Look forward to hearing from you or seeing you sometime in the view. Yes, um, Kevin, what AT Pro is the app on iOS, I think. I think it's just called What AT in Android or the other way around. I might be wrong. But see if you can find it, download it, and you can find info there. But come and find us. 01604-798-070, sales at sightandsound.co.uk, or um, find us one way or another. We can always chat to you offline. Thanks very much, and have a good evening, everybody. Thank you from me, and yeah. uh, likewise, have a good evening. Thanks, everyone. Take care. All the best. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.